For most men, if all they need is another physical release, it's easier to have a one night stand. It's easier to have a mistress. It's easier to have a concubine or something than it is to take on another wife and actually have her as a wife like you. I do feel very strongly that, especially sisters in the community, we need to stop normalizing the extreme emotional response that some sisters have when their husband marries again. Mm -hmm. We need to stop normalizing that because the reality is it's not normal to become suicidal because your husband has taken another wife in halala. Mm -hmm. That is an extreme response. Yeah. And when we start to speak about the ex that extreme response as a normal ex response, any woman would feel like that. It gives permission to other sisters to say, okay, all oh, right. You know, it, it, it sets the narrative, right? Husband marries again. I, I fall into depression. I, you know, I feel suicidal. You know, my life is over, etc. Because well, that's what happens, isn't it? Isn't that the norm? And I, mm. firstly, I don't think that that is a normal response, psychologically or spiritually, right? right. Um, and, and I don't think that we should be normalizing that. I think that we should be teaching our young girls, firstly, we need to teach ourselves, but we should be teaching our young girls, this is a possibility and this is what it means. This is what it doesn't mean about you necessarily. This is what it does not mean about your relationship necessarily, but this is what it could mean. And this is the way to, to, to ride through it with grace. If we don't have those conversations with our daughters, we're raising them with the idea that I will be the only one Mm -hmm. um, and that true love is when I'm the only one. And then if her husband now turns around and says, I'd like to marry another, we've perpetuated the cycle. We've just perpetuated the cycle. Love me no more, all this other yeah. stuff. That is so amazing because that was going to be another thing that I was going to ask about having that conversation with your children that about polygyny because it's a form of marriage. If we're going to talk about marriage, if we're going to talk about, um, you know, ethical forms, you know, being married, monogamy is not the only form. So being able to show that there's other options and because if your husband was to take this as an option, that it does not mean that you are this. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that he doesn't care, you know, those type of right. things, because I think that's one of the things, and that was one of the things I was going to, as an upcoming video anyway, if polygyny was normalized, as much as monogamy, would it be much of a problem? Would it be a problem? Would people find in a total issue with it as much, as much as they do now because it's so taboo? Well, it's not the only moral option. Mm -hmm. And we keep saying that monogamy is the only moral option, and it's mm -hmm. not. And it's so not. That's, the, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's a huge issue in a, the Muslim community. You know, we so have to put moral value on polygyny as well. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, yeah. My question, because I thought about something back when you were um, speaking earlier and you stated that um, kind of on the line of how we will have these different, these ideas um, about polygyny. And he was like, I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> um, about so what were you when you say that do you mean that your viewpoint changed um, in polygyny where it was not that you were anti-polygyny but kind of where it was eh. yeah. <laughs> and then now it's like you know what no I see the benefits I see these different yeah. things and it's not just with it were you on that side of the fence where it was like I don't really see it as what people are saying and maybe it's the benefit for the man or something on the lines of that or less, you know, more or less, I guess I should say. Um, I think definitely it was something that I didn't want for myself, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, because it is the man's imperative, you, if you're in a situation where 
you're not feeling that great about men anyway, or if you're in an environment where sisters are not feeling great about men in general, mm -hmm. then for sure they're not going to be fans of polygyny, even though uh, obviously there is a woman involved on the other side, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. if the man is benefiting, then that woman, the other one, she's also benefiting, right? But we don't count her. We don't count her mm -hmm. in the sisterhood. Who we count right. are yeah. the ones who who have our same position. So if yes. you're in a community where you or in a or in a clique or in a group of sisters where in general they're not fans of the brothers, then they're not going to be fans of polygyny either, right? Because it's it is the the male imperative. It is his decision to do that, right? It's mm -hmm. something that he wants, and if he wants it enough, he makes it happen. So for me, it was it was a case of I didn't want that for me. I had seen a couple of situations that were really messy and uh, I didn't want that for my life. Um, but I also knew, uh, and I, and around that time was when a lot of these long-term marriages I'm talking about that I know now, it was around the time when the husband took the second, right? And of course, that, that came quite a mutual time. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking 20 years later or something and those marriages are still intact you see that 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 friction at the beginning that pain at the beginning it fades over time and mm -hmm. if the parties are intentional and they work at it they can actually form a family that stands the test of time so mm -hmm. the people that i knew back in the day this is when you know before ever, before i kind of you know had had a different view on it but they were just starting off those marriages then and it was quite difficult right mm -hmm. uh, and now you know like I said 20 years later how many kids later you see that okay it was viable and it benefited more than just the man right mm -hmm. and this is the thing that that a lot of a lot of us don't want to accept is that you keep saying he's doing it for himself let me tell you something yeah for most <laughs> men for most men, and again, guys, if, correct me if I'm wrong. For most men, if all they need is another physical release, it's easier to have a one night stand. It's easier to have a mistress. It's easier to have a concubine or something than it is to take on another wife and actually have her as a wife like you. Because regardless of in your head you're thinking he's doing it for selfish reasons and he's hurting you and he's doing it at your expense which i think is is the thinking that he's doing this good thing potentially but it's at my expense and i don't want him to do it at my expense because i didn't sign up for this all of that if he gets it right this other woman is the, basically the reward and the baraka is multiplied because mm -hmm. this other woman now gets the love, care, and attention of a spouse. And I know sis doesn't want to hear this because she's like, that's my spouse. What do you mean? But the, 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 let's, let's step back for a second. Now we have a situation where not just you are being taken care of, but another sister in Islam is also being taken care of. If she had children and they are have, having a you know, stepfather set up, they now have a masculine role model in their lives, right? Yes, he's not full time, but he's around, right? And he's involved and he is invested and will probably invest more over time. So what we're talking about when we say sort of a healthy, healthy individuals, right? In any situation, in any institution can make it work. So we have to ask ourselves whether we're in a monogamous situation or a polygynous situation. You know, firstly, are we healthy adults? Are we? Are we healthy adults? who are behaving as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to behave. Mm -hmm. Because when you see children coming, you know, people say things like, oh, polygamous marriages scar children, right? They destroy mm -hmm. children's lives. What about the monogamous marriages that scar children and destroy mm -hmm. children's lives? That's right. Like, that's not, it's a moot point actually, right? Mm -hmm. Because most people did not come from polygamous marriages and yet most people have trauma from childhood exactly. so, so so what's up you know so it's not a polygyny exactly. thing it's the people thing like you said right. before it, exactly it's not a polygyny thing it's a people thing and that's where the focus should be it's easy to blame the institution 
it's yeah. easy to blame polygyny and to demonize it. It's easy, right? And it's especially easy because the majority in the society have a privilege that they want to maintain, right? So it's mm -hmm. easy. Um, and the thing is, it's interesting to me. <laughs> um, it's interesting to me because I do think that that position that polygyny is not viable, right? And that polygyny is fraught with issues and fraught with problems and is bound to fail is a very female imperative perspective, right? Mm -hmm. It is a very gynocentric perspective because I don't think that most men, if they're being honest and they were asked, would you like to have more than one wife? I don't think most of them will be like, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. Especially if they have a decent first relation, if they have a decent relationship, mm -hmm. most men will happily take on more. You know, there are, of course, mitigating factors, but they can't afford it. You know, if they don't like women necessarily, and it's like, oh, it's too much headache, like, no way, I wouldn't want to do that. If they don't want more responsibility, it's so many different things, right? But most men, I think, if you were to ask them, they would not have the same... Um, the same level of pushback on polygyny that we've created in the community. And that comes from mm -hmm. us women. And we need to take ownership of that. Even if it's coming from a member or it's coming from a scholar, I don't believe that that scholar is speaking on behalf of the whole society. He's speaking on behalf of the majority of women, right? Mm -hmm. Who are in a situation where they need to basically maintain their position right? Maintain the status quo, because that is the status quo that serves them. And I've said this before, and I've got backlash for this before. But sis, the status quo that's serving you right now, might actually not be serving your husband. And that's something that right. you need to be open to accepting if that's the truth, yeah. right? Girl, what's wrong with you? Girl, polygamy. Polygamy. I'm hearing it everywhere. Polygamy this, polygamy that. Men want to be married to more than one wife. I'm sick of hearing it. Who want to be dealing with something like that anyway? I mean, I don't have a problem with it. What? Well, I mean, if it's done right. <laughs> Who's doing polygamy right? Where can you even find how to do polygamy right anyway? What was that? I heard that too. <laughs> what is this? Wait a minute. Let's talk polygamy uncensored. The practical no nonsense guide to practicing polygamy right? <laughs> you heard that right. And if you want to get your copy shipped to your door, make sure you go to letstalkpolygamy.com so you can learn how to practice polygamy properly. I'm not saying that every man who's married to one woman is dying to marry another. I'm not saying that, right? And I'm not saying that every man who's married to one woman wishes that he could and it's like a big thing for him and whatever. But what I am saying is that we assume that because a man is married to us and we are fabulous, that he should be satisfied. No, he should be satisfied. Like he should not have any complaints, right? Mm -hmm. But I really believe that once children come along, and we start to become busy with the work of mothering, mm -hmm. I, I do believe that many sisters and society and the community, our identity is tied more to our children and the role we play in the larger family mm -hmm. than the kind of wife we are. So I don't know how many of us are actually thinking and, and, and um, rating ourselves on the quality of wifing that we do as much as we do on our mothering. We're very hard on ourselves when it comes to being mothers, right? We, right. we, we have high standards for ourselves when it comes to being moms and mm -hmm. we sacrifice to be good moms. We put in extra work, extra time. We read up, we learn in order to be good moms. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of our sisters for that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we give the same attention to being a wife. And so if, if the husband comes out and says, you know what, I'd like to do this, we can't believe it because we think, well, look at, look at, look at everything I've done for our family. Look at how I'm showing up for the house, for the children, for the this, for the that, for the this. But where is he in that mix, right? Mm -hmm. Where is he on the list of priorities? And again, you know, if this doesn't apply to anybody who's watching, alhamdulillah, 
but mm -hmm. it is a societal thing. Being mm -hmm. a wife is not considered important, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something that you uh, should want per se. It's not mm -hmm. something you should prepare for, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody teaches you how to prepare to be a wife. Nobody yeah. is out here, to, you know, like giving you the skills on being a wife. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just as a society, we just don't prioritize that role um, as we do a mother. So it's natural, I think, for many sisters to say, well, I'm here, aren't I? I'm here. I'm committed to the family. Like, you know, he gets his food, whatever else that is going on. He should be happy with that. Mm -hmm. That's it. They build different. No, I, oh gosh, I love that you touched on that so much. And I know we have, that we can go on and on with this. And I know it's going to be a continuation right. too, because you bring out so many points and you say you get backlash. I don't say certain stuff. I, I got so much backlash on certain things that I said. And mostly people say, well, you, because you don't know any better because you're things. a sec, yeah. <laughs> you're a second wife. So you don't know. But the thing is, is that, or it's like, you think that everything's just supposed to be, you know, put together and everything is so happy. It's not that I think that it is. I think that it can be if like you said, if the people are willing to work, if the people are healthy. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what what timeline you came in on, because the thing is, is that we stated before about the first wise world and things like that. Mm -hmm. I did a video and got a lot of backlash for that. Um, well, about that. To hang you behind that. Like, <laughs> so and, I, and I'm going to actually do a, a response <laughs> to that too. Is. But it's, uh, you, because of the simple fact that's like, let's look at it because the, the just the numbers. You are either a only wife or a first wife anyway. The majority of the people yeah. are. So we're just being real about it. It's nothing, you know, negative or spiteful about it. Right. It's what it is. Right. And whatever, however the majority feels, people are going to get that. What, what um, I heard with Mohammed Ijaz said, the emotional contagiousness. Mm -hmm. of it all, <laughs> emotional where, contagion, yeah. <laughs> where it's like, oh, well, you you have pain so i feel your pain and i feel your pain and i feel your pain and if the and people will have me, trauma right people yeah. sisters will experience trauma on behalf of other sisters right and the yeah. thing is you know and, and again this, this stuff is is tough and tricky mm -hmm. as as women we are emotional beings right mm -hmm. most of us have not been taught emotional regulation yeah. Most of us do not know how much power we actually have over our emotions. We mm -hmm. think that our emotional response is a direct result of what's happened. But of course, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Our emotional response is a direct result of our thinking about what's happened, what yeah. we're choosing think of what we're choosing to focus on what the story we're telling ourselves is all about that is what creates the emotion so that's why i think even in today and amongst you know us as women in general it's very difficult to a sister who's having an emotional episode right and who is bleeding yeah she's bleeding out all right on on the people around her on the sisters around her it's actually very difficult to do anything except soak up the blood because nobody around is equipped to kind of coach her through this she doesn't know how to coach herself through this and so what actually ends up happening is this traumatic event which didn't need to be traumatic it wasn't the event that was the trauma it was your response to the event what you thought about the event how you allowed yourself to feel and then kind of what you continued to kind of to dig into and spiral downwards that's where the trauma is right mm -hmm. so not every pain that we face as women is traumatic or needs to be trauma guys right. we have to stop normalizing that normal life events meaning loss betrayal mm -hmm disappointment, frustration. This is a normal part of life on this dunya, right? There mm -hmm. is, it is an unrealistic expectation to think that no one in your life will ever let you down, that mm -hmm. you will always occupy the position that you occupied before, that you will never have to lose anything, will never have to sacrifice anything, will never have to put yourself behind the greater good. This is unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And the more we hold on to this ideal that, you know, everything's going to be wonderful, the, the, the less resilient we are and the less we can cope with normal life events. So true.
we teach our kids to do that, but then it seems like it changes when it go when it happens to us. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, and to, to, to your point, window. sis, because I, I know we have to wrap up now, but you know, the we talked, you were talking about the children, right? Mm -hmm. The children are only traumatized because of you, sis. Right. I'm sorry. It's oh, not I'm so glad the you fact. Said that. It's not the fact that their father married again that is traumatizing the kids. Mm -hmm. It's how you respond. It's what That's you right. say about it. It's what you don't say about it. Their response is related to you and how you are reacting to the scenario. Mm -hmm. So even when people say, this is what polygyny does. It destroys children's lives. It traumatizes them. It makes them hate men. It makes them hate women. All of this stuff, no. Again, it's not the institution. It is the way the people in the institution are running things, right? So of course, if my father marries again, and I never see him ever again, like he disappears, he abandons the family, right? And we hear that he has another wife somewhere. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna feel some kind of way for sure, right? Mm -hmm. um, if my, my father married again and my mother went off the deep end and had to be committed yes so she has she, she literally lost her mind and it destroyed our whole family that's going to be my story that's what polygamy does mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. my father married again and this is what happened but of course as a child you don't realize that your father made irresponsible choices it wasn't the fact that he married again because he could have had a mistress and done that right mm -hmm. he could have chosen drugs and done that he made irresponsible choices your mother wasn't able to regulate her emotions right and didn't have the support she needed in that particular situation it was mm -hmm. not the polygyny that was the issue it was the people and the way they showed up in the situation and i think that that is a really important point for us to keep bringing up with muslim audiences and muslim mm -hmm. communities don't problemize the institution Look at the problems with the people and let's solve that because we've got the power to do that. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to teach the skills of emotional regulation. We have the ability to show people how they can choose their thoughts and impact their emotions and how they show up. This is doable. As for you know, trying to mm -hmm. demonize a whole institution that is halal and that has been a part of Muslim societies ever since the beginning, you're not gonna win. And men's natural polygamous nature you want to stamp that out you're not going to win right you are not going to win pushing against biology and pushing against what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said is halal and has baraka you're not going to win so instead of fighting that battle let's fight the battle within the battle with the nafs the battle with the ego the battle with the fairy tales the battle with those you know those fantasies that you are that you are still holding on to and let's get real about this life which is that it's finite which is that nothing is guaranteed which is that it's a test and we will return to allah and all we need to care about is what am i going to say on that last day that's all on that note sister because you went there we needed you to go there because the sisters need to hear these things and the more we talk about it the easier it will be to talk about it inshallah mm -hmm. inshallah um, i'm so we're we're so happy to hear your insight your input yeah. so glad that you took time out with us <laughs> um for this so alhamdulillah oh my gosh and it's again it's so much more that we can talk about and of course yeah. we will we will, we will. inshallah, <laughs> God will um, bring um, Sister Naima back and have uh, more conversations um, about this because as we stated before in a number of um, our recordings and episodes that we've done before, we stated that this is gonna this is an ongoing conversation. Yeah. It's a number yes. of things that we have to um, dig through and peel back the layers of these different things. So, you know, alhamdulillah, like I said, you shed some light on so many important things um, with us being the, the owners of how we perceive things, how we pursue things and how we mm -hmm. make our own lives and marriages the best that we can make it. We have that power. So alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair.
Barakallahu feeki. Jazakallahu khairan. May Allah bless you guys. Uh, Amin. Amin. Allahu Amin. All right. Hope you guys got some great information from this video, this talk, this wonderful um, informational session. (laughs) Um, And if you haven't already, make sure you share because sharing is caring. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. (laughs) And we're going to leave you guys with what? Some GLC. (laughs) So make sure you are growing intentionally. Loving fearlessly. And connecting on a higher level every single day. And make sure if you haven't already, join our private community, Mm -hmm. Troll Free Zone. You'll get the information, the links in the description. And you guys are going to want to pick up your polygamy roadmap. For women, it's an ebook, guys. So make sure you guys pick that up. And where is that at? You'll find all that information (laughs) right in the description. (laughs) (laughs) Inshallah, God willing, we will see you guys in the next video. As-salamu alaykum. Peace.